to for your leadership has seen a 1,000% growth. <laughs> Growing from 8,000 to 80,000 students. <laughs> no, there's something about you, Nana Otunfo. You have so much power but you don't show power. You are so powerful and yet so humble. <laughs> Your upbringing has enabled you to identify with the common man. When you shared your story about your journey to session yours, to be under the leadership of a disciplinarian headmaster, Mr. Bancro, said to myself, here is a young man and a man who could have gone to Prempe College with no inhibition. In my case, I went to Jasha Prams because that's the only place I could go. <laughs> but someone who could have gone to Prempe was not sent there. It was as if you were being prepared for a moment when you could understand the ordinary man. You had a golden spoon, which you, have, you could have used, but you were given a wooden spoon to eat with. <laughs> two four, we don't have enough time to chronicle the kind of things you've done in the education space. Most of the things you've done, the ordinary Ghanaian may not know. When we needed close to 200 million to reform education, when the funding was in jeopardy, you stepped in, you talked to your friends at the World Bank, and the money came through. Gave a lifeline of support to Ghanaian youth when they needed it the, the most. Before free senior high school, you gave them free senior high school. <laughs> the Tun for Education Foundation provided so much support to so many. You even went beyond the Asante Kingdom to the rest of the country because you are truly a father of the whole nation. Many young men and women have become medical doctors and engineers and lawyers and teachers because you offered them a lifeline. Those who had no hope of going to senior high school and beyond went to senior high school and beyond because you had a vision that every young man and woman should be given an opportunity, equal opportunity, and that we need to create a more equitable society where there's no gap between the advantage and the disadvantage, where all Ghanaians could come together and work together create a more cohesive society. And when there are challenges in our society, you go to the rescue, go on your peacemaking adventure. You bring various ethnic groups together. You bring families together. You allow our nation to live in peace. Otunfo, on this occasion of your 25th anniversary, we celebrate you. We ask God for long life. For you, we need you. I will continue to pray for you. My government is grateful for your support. My government is grateful for your wise counsel. Our university is grateful to you for the countless number of hours you spend, faculty and staff, resolving challenges. And I think it's Dr. Grasa that said, when Otunfo speaks, the rest of the world hears. So sometimes we see facilities coming out here, School of Engineering and teaching hospital, and we take it for granted. Sometimes you don't know what Otunfo has said in his office to somebody. <laughs> then find manifestation outside. Otunfo, we are taking serious note about the images I saw about the teaching hospital. 
And I've been told that there has been released 50% of the funds needed for the equipment. In fact, they told me the letter is in my office. So when I go to Accra, I'm going to make sure we process it because it will be a great opportunity for you and the president to commission the TT Hospital in your year, in your silver, uh, uh, silver Jubilee year. So I believe that we'll do everything possible to get that project done. <laughs> Two for your promotion of STEM, promotion of sports, international partnerships, a second to none. We'll continue to be grateful to you, continue to honor you. We we'll continue to celebrate this moment with you. And we we'll continue to say that your reign has made a great impact on Asante, on Ghana, and the world at large. Congratulations on this milestone. Congratulations for a great job done. I will continue to pray for you for long life, so you continue to be an inspiration to us all. Thank you.